click on. And I'm, I'm hopefully that's okay for everyone. We're recording this, no problems. Okay. All right. Um, and let, let me, I'll start off with just uh, an introduction of who I am. And then I'll also have my colleague introduce my, my name's Jerry Hanley. Um, I, I joke around now, uh, you know, I'm a recovering administrator uh, from the California State University system. Um, I, I'm a started out as a professor of psychology. Uh, my area is called human factors. And, um, and then I, um, went on a road of ruin going into administration. I started in faculty development and then technology came around, right? And said, how does that influence teaching? And, and this is going back, I've been in the Cal State system uh, for, uh, I'm afraid to say 38 years. Um, so, um, and then over time, I uh, be finally became the uh, assistant vice chancellor for academic technology. Uh, for the Cal State system, uh, 23 campuses. And we have a lot of students. We have about a half a million students and working with about 28,000 faculty members trying to make everyone happy um, in using technology in various ways. So, um, and, and during that process, uh, this is early on, this is like in the late 1990s, we recognized that uh, as people were developing these uh, technologies that no one knew where they were, right? And, and when we think about our scholarship of faculty, the libraries play a critical role in order for us to find out what's going on in our discipline and what's how things are advancing and what are the new ideas and all this other stuff. So, um, so that's when in uh, 1996, we started um, creating uh, a, a library of learning resources, instructional materials, and, um, and we were up in Sonoma County, so we had a little fun with our title called Merlot, Multimedia Educational Resources for Learning and Online Teaching. And um, there's a story about how we came up with that, but let's just, I'll leave it at, at a Japanese restaurant where we consumed a good amount of alcohol and we had some creativity going on there. And, um, but, you know, over the years, it, it moved from just a California, Cal State University thing. And then we just had invited a bunch of other institutions. And now Merlot is a, a open library for everyone around the world to be able to use. And what's important is not just what you take out, right? Uh, like a library, um, you can remove things out, but also as a community of educators, you can put your stuff in and do the sharing. And that's really how Merlot has sustained itself for all these years, 25 years, is really being a community where people are sharing uh, what they're doing in their teaching and learning with technology in various ways. So, um, and then, so with that, we've been building that up. And, and then in, in California, um, just a little context too about, um, and I think thinking about your students, you know, about half of our students are Pell eligible in the Cal State system, meaning their families can't afford to send them to college. That's fundamentally what that means, right? So, and when textbooks, you know, increased in their cost, then you found, you know, an economic disadvantage for many of our students not having access to that. So, so in 2010, we started something called the Affordable Learning Solutions Initiative. And, and that was kind of leveraging what we did in Merlot and helping faculty look for alternatives. And, and one of the things I'll just say in, in, uh, in working with Greg is just saying here, we're not trying to take away choice of content for you. We want to add options for you by looking at what these alternatives are, right? And how you can look at where there might be no and low cost options that might suit your needs as a faculty member, what you're trying to achieve with learning outcomes with alternatives, okay? So, so that, that's, um, I think just a, a point I really wanna make is, is that Merlot is a resource alternatives and we have other things too as well uh, to help you find materials that suit the needs that you have as an instructor and for your students. So, and, and when, when Greg was saying about, you know, your, having your uh, program moving forward on your Z degree programs, you know, I just suggest it might be helpful just to get you started with saying, how do I 
kind of lighten the burden for you finding all these alternative things. So, so today I thought I would just demonstrate all the ins and outs of, or how about the, uh, the, the first phase of the ins and outs of using Merlot. Um, so, so it becomes a little easier for you to find alternatives and help you understand how, how to do that today. So, so that's my goal. And we do, you know, we just have a few people here, which is great. Uh, I really prefer that better. And then you can ask specific questions. How do I get this? What do I do about that? Da, 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 da. And to, to address your questions there. And, and I'll, before I start doing that, I'll and do the screen share, I'll just pass it over uh, Maria Feith, who's uh, a member of our Merlot Skills Commons team here. So Maria. Thanks, Jerry. I'm Maria Feith, and um, I'm, a, I'm a member of the Skills Commons Merlot team, but I'm also a member of your support team. And so um, I'm here just to um, um, be a support system for you, another layer of support for you. Uh, I've been in education for 33-ish years, somewhere in there. And uh, I come out of K-12, but I have been in higher ed for the probably the last, um, I don't know, 10 or 15 years of my career. And um, I have done some teaching. I have taught um, um, research courses and um, 17th century literature courses. <laughs> and that was all fun and good learning for me too, as well as for everyone under me. So um, I, I'm feeling you and I'm glad you're here and we're, um, we're happy to be helping to support this effort in Idaho. While Jerry is um, showing you some pretty cool things that you're going to be able to use immediately. I'm going to be slipping some of those links into the chat. So at the end of the meeting, if you want to just download the chat, you'll have them all. You don't have to take a lot of notes and worry about where you went and how to find that again. We'll make it super easy for you. Okay. All right. So sound good. You're ready to uh, have a docent tour of the Merlot Vineyard. How's that sound? Okay. All right, let me just do a little share screen. And, and, and as, as Maria said, skills commons, just um, as I'm pulling this up, um, Merlot is focused on, I'll say more of the, the academic areas. Um, and skills commons is focused on the um, uh, workforce development areas. So if you're looking for um, manufacturing materials, you're looking for healthcare, you're looking for construction, agriculture, all that other stuff. We've got a lot of things there too as well. All right. So, um, so this is Merlot. Um, and uh, just to give you a little kind of tour that if, it, if I don't mind, how many people have played around with Merlot a little bit already? Greg? And, and feel free to come on off the mic and just, you know, chime in um, too as well. Okay, so, so at, as I talked a little bit already, Merlot is a communities library. And I mean that as a possessive that it's owned by uh, people all around the world. And, and the Cal State Long Beach campus is really the administrator of, of this system. And so I'll just run by here we have Something you know your your Google search box and you know that's pretty straightforward. We have some advanced search things if you want to focus in on stuff. And and I'll show you this ISBN Finder thing is if you have a textbook that you like you use, you can type in the ISBN for that book, and then it'll show you what are all the free and open materials related to that textbook, right? So that's another way. That's a pretty cool way of finding that. So how much, we got almost 100,000 materials in Merlot. Uh, we have um, almost 200,000 members from around the world and uh, representing over 4,000 institutions. And, uh, and, and in the last 30 days, we've had 824 contributions. So just to highlight the point that Merlot is a continuously growing collection of materials, by people and, um, and we have ways to find things. If you just wanna look at math or history, uh, art stuff or um, uh, biz, you know, whatever it is, chemistry, um, we have ways for you to kind of tackle all those things and, 
Um, and and so that this is just kind of the kind of the home page, just giving you a sense. And and also, if you want to create your own uh, open education resources, we actually have a tool called Content Builder that's free and open for you to use. And and my kind of uh, bottom line is. Uh, if you can create a Word document, you can create a website with Content Builder because it's really simple. And, um, and they built it for me because I'm not the most um, skilled in technology. I'm a user and, uh, and it, it's pretty easy. And, and, and what we can do over time is beginning to show you a lot of how the, these tools work. Okay. So the, the first thing, what, what, what I'm going to do is just to start off with... Um, getting a sense of how, a, how the library works. And right up here on the top left corner, there's something called browse. And, and, the, and what I'm gonna do is just think about when you go into a library, right? You walk into the main doors and then you go into the stacks and you're kind of looking for books and things like that. So you can, in a sense, browse all the materials um, that, that's in Merlot. And, and I'm doing that to help you kind of get an understanding of how the library is organized, right? So the first part is you have all these, uh, and let me just blow this up a little bit so it's a little bigger. Um, the older I get, the bigger things need to be so I can see it. How, how does that, does that, does that work for folks a little easier? Okay. So on the left-hand side, you can see all the disciplines. So. In the arts, we have almost 4,000 business, education, humanities, math, stats, science, technology, almost 50,000 in science and tech, workforce development. And, and what you can do, let's say you're in um, science and technology and, and you click on that and then you see, oh, here are all the sub-disciplines in it. So agriculture, astronomy, biology, right? And you say, oh, I'm in chemistry, so I, I can click on that. And, uh, and then see what's in chemistry. So you can see it's like going to the floor and then you go down the aisle and then you start looking at the shelf space and okay, what are there? And here's some inorganic. So that's my freshman class. I may wanna get started, right? And then here's some other things. So now I'm, I'm kind of focusing on my, that sub-discipline. So everyone get that so far, how we kind of, navigate through with getting down to your kind of specialty area that, that you'd like. And then the next part I wanna highlight is, you can see how in, in Merlot, we also have different types of materials available for you, right? So you might say, oh, maybe I can, how can I find a substitute for the textbook that I have? So I can click on, oh, what are the, open access textbooks, I can click on that. And then it narrows down to chemistry of just the inorganic open textbooks. So now we're down to 12 things. And ChemWiki, um, and, and it was it Emily who's the chemistry person? Yes. Yeah, okay, right, okay. Um, so, so there's a lot of stuff, you know, like ChemWiki has a lot of great stuff in chemistry free and open for you to use. Oh, here's a, a SUNY, uh, the State University of New York um, textbook initiative that has something in chemistry. You got open stacks, right? So here, are, so you have a chance to explore, here are some um, free materials to look at. And, and I'll, I'll just go to, to one, let's say here we have uh, ChemWiki, Dynamics, right? So what, one of the things you can do is you can say, oh, let me go see the material. Or I can say, ah, before I go and check it out, maybe I can see what else is there, right? Let me get some more information about it. And you say, oh, here's some, here's a, a, a description of it. Oh, there's reviews of this book too as well. So an editor has reviewed it. People have made comments about it because Merlot is a, a living community of people. And then it, here's more information about it. And, and you can see over here. Um, so Emily, for example, if you, this has a Creative Commons license on it. So that means that 
If you want to use any material in ChemWiki, all you have to do is you're welcome to use it and you just attribute it back to the authors of ChemWiki. NC means you non-commercial means you can't take the book and sell it to people, right? And anything that you create, you can also, that's great. They want you to do that. But what they're also saying, when you create something new, you would share alike. That's what the essay stands for. And, and Greg, if you ever want me to do a little mini lecture about Creative Commons licensing, there's a whole story that we can tell to help people about that. But I, I'm just going to highlight here just around that the materials that you have in Merlot. So you, if you say, oh, what can I do with these things, right? It, it'll tell you kind of with the licensing what's possible here. All right. So, so this gives you a little description. The other thing that, that we have in Merlot that, that helps out, right? Um, it'll say, here are similar books or similar resources. Um, that's a, in chemistry. We built a little kind of, you can think of this like the Amazon tool. People who looked at this, you know, um, the ChemWiki also looked at these things, right? So it helps you see what are kind of popular out there. And then this has other books that, that are kind of related to it. So here are hopefully what the Merlot Library helps you do is find materials that are targeted for your interests. And also what are all the other related materials that other people might have used? Okay, so was that just a helpful uh, overview of um, uh, kind of how the Merlot Library works? It, I, again, I gave you a real quickie, and I know Ken Wiki Cricky uh, uh, description. Was it, so was that helpful, folks? Yes, thank you, Jerry. Okay, all right. Other things too, folks. What you can do is um, let's say you want to see what's the newest stuff, right? I can click on that and say what's the newest things, and up. Oh, okay. Here's some of the newest things. Uh, now we got Libra text, all right? Recently added a few years ago, right? Um, I can also just, you know, if I wanna say, well, maybe I wanna look for not just um, materials that are, are, are open textbooks, maybe I wanna look for something else like simulations or animations or, things that could engage students in, in online materials. So then I might wanna look at, oh, let me check out simula simulations here, right? So you can, again, think about the pedagogy that you want to have. Do I want a resource book or do I wanna look for other activities that I can assign my students um, engaging some of these things? So uh, again, I'm, I'm not gonna go through all the details here, but the purpose of this orientation session is to just get you a sense of how, how you can explore and find materials aligned with your needs, your content needs by going by discipline and also um, going by, I'll call it your pedagogical needs based on um, your, um, but, and, and you can do that by looking at the type of materials right here that, that are available that, that you can begin to narrow things down. Do I want a case study or do I want drill and practice? They need to do something like that. Or uh, you're looking for some quizzes or tutorials that might be really helpful or something along those lines, okay? So hopefully you can see the range of materials, a full online course, maybe how, how I wanna structure that or online course modules, okay? All right, so just wanna make sure you, you, I, I give you a sense of what's in the Merlot collection and that you really have a lot of flexibility. I may wanna you know, look at um, by titles alphabetic or in this case, overall rating because Merlot, for example, has 
um, a, um, we have editorial boards and I'll talk a little bit about that. So, and I'll just, you know, click on this example. Here's an example of the virtual chemistry lab. Merlot's editorial boards, we evaluate the site, we give you a description of it, recommended uses, blah, 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 all on these lines. And then we say, what about the quality of the content? Right, saying the apps are good. Here's some concerns. How about its effectiveness as a teaching tool, right? And then how easy is it for both faculty and students to use, right? Because when you're trying to look at substitutes for things that students are familiar with and you're familiar with, a lot of times these peer reviews can be very helpful for you to um, identify materials that um, are um, will, will be, I'll say, more likely to be helpful and useful and easy to use right out of the box, all right? And again, as I'm showing you here, here's things in the discipline similar, what have other people used? And then here's comments uh, that people have made, things along those lines. And, and the, the next thing I'm gonna show you here in any material, one of the things that people can do in Merlot is they can create their own digital bookshelf in Merlot. So right now, if you notice, um, there's something called bookmark collections right here. And this is another way that, that the community within Merlot creates resources for sharing, right? And, and when, in a sense, when people create bookmark collections, they, um, it's telling you what they have found useful. And you can think of these as um, citation indexes for teaching materials, right? Um, so, and I'm, I'm just scrolling down here and, and you know, you have things, all things interesting that uh, Kim, uh, Chim Khan decided to, or Amy's personal book collection, what she's put together. Someone else has a chemistry labs, right? Resources to help me get through, right? Chem lab content. And, and I'm, I'm just gonna pick that one for example. And so I can just look at this, click on this. Looks like it's an introduction to chem, right? And then I can say, oh, who is Martin Shingler? And so Martin is a professor and, uh, and he's organized these materials. He's at Lakeland Community College in Ohio, all right? And here's stuff that, that he's put together. And you can say, well, now that I see who Martin is, here's a professor um, in, uh, and he's put together a lab thing. And now what he's done is here are nine online materials that he's put together in his own kind of bookshelf, right? And one of the things, again, this is a way that you can, how do you streamline finding things that other people have found useful? You might look at them and say, hey, this is pretty cool. Rather than me going to find all these things again, one of the things I can do is I can just, if I, you look at this little icon here, if I click on it, I can copy this bookmark collection into my own private, personal, and not private, it'll share, but uh, on my own collection of materials. So that's another way you can look at what other people have done. And then if you could do that, then you can go and edit it for yourself, all right? So that's something about when you become a Merlot member, you can create all these bookmark collections for sections of the course that you teach, for different courses, and you can share them across your faculty members. And this URL right here, that's at the top here, that's of this collection, you can pop that in your canvas and then the students can go right to this collection. You say, oh, I'm, we're, we have a lab in 
uh, whatever it might be, electronegativity -neg type, you know, experiments. And here's some background around that. All right. And then you can pop that in Canvas and the students can co go to your collection there and they might say, oh, this is pretty helpful for my learning. And they could become members in Merlot and they could copy their own collections too as well. So Merlot, what I'm, this next stage that I'm getting to in describing what Merlot does, it's not only a library for you to find things, it's a library where other people have found and organized and curated materials, and you can leverage all those work that they've done. And now even your students can take advantage of your collection of materials, and then they can create their own learning resources as well. And, and what I'll show you is when you become a member of Merlot, you can see I'm logged in right now, and everything that we've done so far, you don't have to be a member. You can just kind of browse and find stuff. But when you want to create your own bookmark collections, that's when you, you become a member. And, and I'll just show you, here's an example. Here's my profile within Merlot, all right? And so here I am, I have a description. I could put my topics up, my interest areas in what my affiliation is, members in my own institution. There's a lot of stuff here and we can go over that a little bit. But you can see over here, I have, I've created 85 little bookmark collections, whether it's software engineering, teaching English as a second language, biology, right? Organic chemistry, all right? Gender and ICT literacy, all right? all these things, history classes, all so, so you can then begin to create your own personal collection of resources that you can share with your colleagues, you can share with your students, and, um, and then really simplify the curation process um, that, uh, and make it easy not only for you to find stuff, but for your students to find things too as well. All right, so let, let me stop there and just see um, if people have uh, questions uh, before I go on to more things um, that, uh, that, that we have in Merlot. All right, any comments, questions? Anybody surprised as to how much stuff you have here and what you can do with it? So Jerry, so far the only question is about um, just signing up for the membership. You, there are some things that you cannot do without a membership and Jerry's gonna talk about that, but, but you can go in and look around and see all of the, the content that is already there. There's just some benefits to creating an account. Okay, yes, Emily, you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering if there's a difference between maybe sharing this content instructor to instructor versus instructor to student, or if it's all the same. It's all the same. If you want okay, to, you. yeah, if you want to share just instructor to instructor, right, a lot of times what you can do is you can create, um, you know, let's say within Canvas, um, like you have a Canvas Commons capability where then you can do that instructor to, to instructor. Um, the whole purpose behind Merlot is to enable every learner everywhere to have access to these resources. And whether you're teaching or learning, you have all those available there, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, all right, so um, what, what I'm gonna show you here, you say, uh, I'll say, you know, Merlot doesn't have any everything. So if you didn't find something that you like, you can click on this other button here, this tab that says other libraries. And now what I'm gonna show you here is Merlot searches about 80 other libraries. So if you can see on the left-hand side, all right, all these other libraries of free and open educational content that's available here, 
Okay. So if you could say, oh, um, I'm just going to make something up. You know, uh, I want something, you know, maybe I want to get someone to have an exciting talk. So I might go to TED Talks and say, are there any chemistry TED Talks? Right. And bingo, here is science and technology lessons. Here's, here's, here's some other things here, right? And you can look through things that are related to, that's in the sciences, technology and chemistry, chemi the chemistry of cookies by Stephanie, right? Okay, so I'm just g giving you an example here about the wealth of information. I might say, you know what? Maybe I want to look for the um, the virtual labs. So Emily, you know, uh, talking about the simulation. So let me just look at all the FET labs that are available, right? So then I can look at, and th these are just some wonderful things if, if you're not familiar with them. Um, and then here, then you can say, oh, let me go to the material. And I, here I am in all the simulations that I have. And if I wanna know about general chemistry, let me just focus on those. And then if I wanna do something about diffusion, I can click on this one. And here are all these, and here's a little video to, to, to give you a, a sense of what that is, gives you some uh, learning goals, different topics that you can cover, um, teaching resources, things along those lines. And, and just to give you a little sense, here, here's how the, the, um, the uh, simulation works here. So, and in my old days, I used to be, uh, uh, chemistry was my major. So you can play around, oh, I wanna put some of these particles in, you know, I wanna change some of the, the, the aspects of the size I might, I may want to change the mass and, oh, may, maybe I'll put that number in there and I want to increase the temperature here, all right? And then I can say, what happens when I remove the divider, all right? So this is the visualization that can be really helpful when you're trying to explain diffusion and uh, what might happen in osmosis and things along those lines. This stuff might, might be helpful there. So is this helpful, Emily? I'm just, I just pulled this up as an example here. Yeah, those are great resources. Um, I use those currently and um, having more of them available to me is very important. Yep. You know, and students can have fun with these things, you know, and it really can engage them in these various things. So, so, so the first thing, you know, what we're getting to here is if you can't find it in Merlot, you can look at many other libraries here. Uh, you have MIT's Open Courseware, uh, Internet Archive. You know, you need little videos on, you got Khan Academy, all right? So hopefully you can see Merlot is a kind of a one-stop shop. And finally, the last thing I'll just show you here in, not only do we search all the other libraries, but we also search the web for educationally related materials um, in, and in this case, we talked about chemistry. And, and I'll say if, if you ever, you know, you, you do a Google search in some of your topic areas, uh, I'll say if you typed in chemistry, typically you wouldn't get environmental science and technology, and this is probably from the uh, American Chemistry Society, wouldn't be at the top of the list, right? And that's because what we did is we created uh, a Google search application that really focuses on the types of materials that are most important to educators, okay? So, um, you know, as, as you're getting started in moving from, um, and, um, you know, let's say, and you had mentioned, I think is Karen in art history, you may not find something in Merlot, and here we, we can take a little peek here. Let's just go back for a second, and um, we can, uh, and I'll, I'll just go through the browse process and go through the arts type of si side of stuff. So I can go through here, and I might go into the arts, 
And then I can look at here are um, art history. There's 219 materials. And so then here are the various things in art history. And then again, Karen, then you can decide what do I want to look for? Um, are there substitutes for those books? And so here are art history books that are freely available. And I might say, uh, let me, I'm, I'm just going to pick one. I, I have no idea um, which one would be useful. I could say go to the material. Uh, yeah, if you go to smart history, you'll be overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, so here's a wiki book mm. in art history, right? All right. So, so that's really what, you know, hopefully from, from the, um, just in the discovery side, uh, looking for alternatives as you begin to explore how it can look at alternative content. Um, you can um, uh, browse through, through these things. And, uh, and then of course, if you wanna do search, um, let's say I'll just do uh, calculus. And so again, here's what what here's calculus, and, and notice you can see um, that calculus is showing up. There's in art, in business. Obviously, it's mostly in math and stat, but you're seeing calculus in its application in other disciplines too as well. And then um, and then you can also pick. Maybe I just want to look for. What are some of the, I want to look at how courses are taught. Um, and maybe I can look at how other people are teaching calculus with, um, you know, calculus for life sciences and stuff like that. So then I can um, just click on these and I can go to the, you know, go right to the material. And I can, this looks like it was in Chinese and I can translate it into Click to, I guess they're testing stuff out. Now, let, let's say you, you come to something like this, you say, ah, this isn't what I want, or you say there's a broken link or something like that. It doesn't work because we have so many materials. It's really easy to do. You can say, you know what? Here's a broken link. Do you want to be notified if it's, if it's fixed? And if you know what it is, we can substitute it. You can send the report. Or you can say, you know what, that this is really inappropriate, and the and the message goes to our webmaster, who will then examine it and decide to take it out or put it in, or contact the author and find out what what we should do with it. Okay. And and that's kind of how the open community works. Is you know not everything. Just so you know, not everything is what you want, but what we try to do is provide you tools to help you find those materials that are most aligned with what you're looking for. Okay, so before I go on to other things of uh, getting you oriented to Merlot, um, we just went through browsing through the collection a little bit, how you can find stuff, and then some you know, looking at smart search, looking at Searching Merlot, searching other libraries, and searching the web. Any any questions? Was this helpful? I think it's going to be really useful once I spend a little time with this. Thank you. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Right? Yeah, and. You know, it's um, and if you need a glass of Merlot on the side at the end of the day to enjoy it, you know, you can do that too. All right, um, here and and let, let me just show you how um, to the ISBN finder works. All right, so so this is something um, where you can, uh, and I, I'm just going to copy an ISBN number here for you. Um, so I, I can put that ISBN number in it. And so, so what happens is it's telling you what the book is, Chemistry by Julia Burdage. And then here are materials 
related to that book. And then you can say, oh, you know what? Um, related to that book, I just want to look for animations to illustrate how chemical things occur, right? And so here's some, some demos and stuff like that. All right. So, so that's how the ISBN finder works. Now, the, the next thing I'm going to show you too is one of the things we have in Merlot is we have about, uh, I think it's uh, two dozen editorial boards. And these are faculty um, across the world who have their subject matter expertise in these topic areas. And, um, and, they, and they, what they, they also do is um, they help us curate the collection of materials that we have here. So I'm kind of scrolling through um, the different um, editorial boards that, that we have. And, um, you know, we talked about mathematics. I'll just pick that one since we, we've covered this. So, so here, if you just want to look at the math stuff, you don't want to see anything else. Um, what we have here is we have, you know, a little message from the editor. And what they do is they often showcase some applications that they think are really good. Um, these portals also will help you say, what's newly added into the Merlot collection? Who are the new members that in, who are in math? And then here's the math breakdown of all the different uh, subject areas uh, that we have. So, so if you're in the math thing, you say, oh, I just wanna do geometry or discrete math, or I'm looking for um, pre-calculus math, differential equations. I could just click on differential equations and it pops up those type of materials, okay? We try to give you shortcuts um, to that. And then we also say, what are some, you, you may wanna look at some of the professional organizations. Many times they have resources, journals, and then we have Twitter feeds and Google alerts um, that are related to your topic area, okay? So, so in these over here, academic discipline communities, you can then, you know, if, if you want to focus in on those, you can see where we have stuff in physics, psychology, stat, teacher ed, world languages, et cetera. All right. So that's another thing about what we have in kind of academic disciplines. And then we also have, uh, we call them academic support services. And, um, and these are often topics that cross disciplines. So, uh, and let's just say, for example, if you're, you know, you're kind of rethinking the way you want to teach your classes, right? We have this faculty development portal that goes through <clears throat> what are all the type of things that I, I may want to look at? What are all the different type of teaching strategies that, that, that I, I might, I might want to think about. And so I can click on teaching strategies and I say, oh, active learning, experiential learning. I'm just going down the side. You know, lecture strategies, hybrid and online courses, da, 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 da. So, so you can find not only your content area, but you can also find other materials that cross things, ICT literacy skills, mobile learning. Um, and I'm gonna show you one in a second, the open educational practices, but I would just wanna get to um, other ones here. Um, if you're looking at in the STEM area, we have a whole section on just virtual labs and you can pick biology, chemistry, physics, engineering, math, health sciences. And um, again, tools that, that are available here. And what I'm gonna show you next here, I, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll just pick one physics. Um, and uh, so not only do we highlight the FET ones and you can go explore those, but we also have a number of the simulations in, um, in, in um, Merlot. And then we have other, BC campus has some things we have. So, so we try to organize it to kind of lighten your load in trying to find materials 
in your discipline. All right. Okay. So again, was that helpful so far before I jump into something else? It was very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Now, in open education resources is about the materials that you use. One of the things that we have in Merlot too as well is a whole separate portal on open educational practices. So that is, how do you teach things? And, um, and the way we capture that is with having faculty create e-portfolios for them to tell their story about how they teach in different ways. And those are free and open for you to explore too as well. So, and let's just begin with affordable learning again. So these are e-portfolios of faculty telling their stories about how do they use open textbooks. And, and here's a sample and uh, a Michael, what does he teach? Um, oh, it teach, he teaches American history. So I'll, I'll just so you can click on this, you know, blue button here and it opens up to a, and this is the California Open Online Library. And so this is Michael's story about the book that he uses to teach American history. So that's on the left-hand side. Here's the course that he teaches itself, what his objectives are, blah, 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 a bunch of stuff here, right? And, and you have, you know, that context for how he's teaching. And he's even put up sample assignments of how he teaches and his syllabus, okay? And then you have on the final column is about the adoption process. Why did he do it? Um, things along those lines. So again, these are stories by faculty talking to other faculty about how they, they teach. And we have these organized by discipline. So if you're, um, uh, we haven't hit the humanities, I'll just hit the humanities. Um, so here's, um, let's see, what do we have here? Um, Congressional research, we have something about um, uh, English, uh, writing course, a fiction writer's workshop. Um, we have another one, including uh, uh, history and lives of average American women, okay? Course description, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, right? So here's a whole variety of uh, US history stuff, of faculty telling their stories about how they move to open education resources and how do they do that to make that work? Okay, so we have all these different things. And if you want stuff in science and technology, we got that, that list of things. We'll just click on that. And so here's um, all, all these things, all right? So, so that's in, you know, how do I use free and open materials? Another area that's in this open educational practices on how do I teach? We also, um, and this is when I was running the stuff in the California State University system, we had faculty look at what are the high failure rate courses and how can we redesign them to make them more successful? And this is where what we had our faculty do is tell their stories about how do they redesign courses to be more successful. And um, I'll just pick one kinesiology. I'm just picking stuff out here, right? And, and to, to give you an example. So here are um, stories by faculty members who are, um, in this case, they, I guess they flipped the classroom, right? Where they have students do more reading outside of class and they're more um, um, in class or active learning activities. All right, and I'll, I'll, again, I'll just pick one here. Oh, access restricted, so they didn't want it available. Let's try this one here. So here's their course redesign one. 
And so here's the story by Jeffrey Bernard. And here's his story about the background of the class and how he redesigned it, what they did. You can review the syllabus. Um, what were the improvements? Did students grade improve over time? So this is where faculty are giving you all this feedback about what they did. And again, you can see a Creative Commons license at the bottom there. All right. So I know I've covered a lot of materials in Merlot, but I just wanted to give you, um, you know, a sense of when you're looking at the Merlot website, you have browsing and searching, you have communities uh, that have helped organize materials um, for these resources, and, uh, and there's other stuffs here. Um, and and uh, the last thing I'll highlight just in, in uh, and we can have another session about this just to uh, point out skills commons that we talked about is uh, a free and open educational resource related to workforce development. So if I want something about nursing, I can click on this search and, and here are materials that are related to nursing. And if you want transition to nursing practices. And I think one of the things that's different about skills commons is that these are actual materials that you can download, put it in your Canvas course, and you can revise them and mix it. And so here's a zip file at 16 megabytes of a whole course of transition from licensed practical nursing to becoming an associate's degrees registered nurses. Okay. And they have a peer review report to say, you know, so they had subject matter experts actually review this. And so here's their evaluation of how they think this course material was. All right. So in Skills Commons, again, we can have another whole session about how to do all that stuff. But I just wanted, in case you have materials or your topic areas is really in workforce development, Skills Commons has a lot of great stuff in there. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing and then we can um, uh, just talk about, have, see if there are any questions that came up um, that I'm happy to answer. Um, in the last minutes before we call it a day. Well, I've got a jet out, but uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I'd played on Merlot a little bit, but was just using it as a uh, book finder, textbook finder, and all the extra features are gonna be really helpful. Um, as I look for OER material and try to develop a course. So uh, appreciate it. And, you're, uh, you're, you're welcome, Sean. Yeah. And, and just to know all of you, if you have any questions, as Maria said, we're here to support you. So we can jump on a Zoom on a one-on-one -on -one tutorial to help you say, hey, what about this? What about that? No problem. That's what we're here to do to help you succeed. Okay, thanks, Sean. All right. Anything else? Um, so Susan, Emily, Mike, and Karen, were you able to get something? Was this a little helpful to make your life a little easier? Yeah, I, I agree with Sean. I, uh, I've looked at Merlot at least for textbooks, but you walked me through a whole bunch of things. It's good stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, my, my motto is give a gift and not a burden. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if we can help. So. And I joke around, I told Greg this, I said, think of us like a gift registry, right? What do you need? And you can knock on our door. And, and so Karen, if you're looking for art history stuff or whatever to topic, you know, we often know the collection, you know, we're like librarians, right? So we often know where we are. We could be your reference librarians in Merlot and Skills Commons. Well, that's good to hear. I am a failed library science student. <laughs> uh, well, well, as faculty, we've all had to come become librarians with our desktops, right? Exactly. And actually, I've worked in libraries. That's how I got through grad school. But I've, <laughs> I've, I've, um, I really, the, the, I've really gotten this better sense of the breadth of resources today. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.
Well, thank you for taking the time. I hope you have a great summer. And again, if you have questions along the way, you know, you can just email us, CC Greg, so he knows what's going on too as well. And Greg, if you need us to do anything more, you just let us know, right? All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, You're Jerry. Appreciate the time. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye.